The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius has always been one of my favorite cartoons. It ran from 2002 to 2006 and remains one of the most beloved Nickelodeon shows. With great characters, timeless humor, and unique conflicts, it's no wonder it's as admired as it is. So with how popular this show was, it received a decent amount of attention from Nickelodeon during its run. It had its share of special episodes and crossover events, but it also received a good few video games. Some of my personal favorites are the AWE PC ones. My therapist warned me about you, Jimmy. There are no such things as aliens. Oh no! There's me, Jimmy! Hurry, Jimmy Neutron! You're our only hope! Women. But I'd like to look at the games you could play online or by downloading them. Like with many other Nicktoons, you could keep yourself entertained for a while on the Jimmy Neutron section of the channel's website. So let's check out some of the games they had for us. Let's start with an amusing one. This is Backyard Smash Ball, something of a baseball game. In this, the Yokians are challenging Jimmy, Carl, and Goddard to a game of baseball to determine the galaxy's best team. Hey, it's better than invading Earth. It's very important to read and understand the instructions because it might seem a little confusing if you don't fully know what to do. You start off pitching as Jimmy, and most of the time, the aliens will hit home runs. Wow, they really are the best team in the galaxy. Why are we even debating this? You either click the mouse or press spacebar to activate this thing in the corner here. Then you have to time your maneuver just right to trigger the speed meter when it's full. Then you hit the button again when the effect meter lands close to the center. If your speed and effect meters are just right, you'll cause the Yokian to get a strike. It's three strikes and they're out. Then Jimmy makes this, uh, very unusual face. I mean, look at that. Imagine waking up at 3 a.m. and seeing it looming over you. You're safe now. You can also change the ball you throw, but you only have a limited amount of bonus balls you can use per game. They're basically guaranteed strikes. Once you've struck the alien out, you can move on to the next segment. As Jimmy, Carl, or Goddard, you have to hit the ball with a bat. You can also cycle through different bats for a stronger effect, just like with the balls. Then it's roughly the same system. It's pretty easy to hit foul balls, too. You get three misses, then it's back to pitching. This game is admittedly tough, and it also goes on for a long time. It can take up to two hours to win. Personally, I think they could have toned it down a little. It's hard to tell just how specific you need to be to throw or hit a ball the right way. It's also easy to lose interest if you keep doing this for a long time. At the same time, it has lively animations, and once you get the hang of the system, it isn't too bad. Though there's one other thing I'd like to mention. This game had a few secret codes to unlock bats and balls that are pretty cool to use. You can blow up the whole town with these. But guess how you figure out the codes? By purchasing a Wendy's Kids Meal. Welcome to Wendy's, can I take your order? Uh, yeah, do you still have those Jimmy Neutron Backyard Smash Ball codes? Okay, it was only part of the collab they did to promote the movie. The codes are genius and tech. Now you can play a Jimmy Neutron game while enjoying a fresh Wendy's Kids Meal. Gotta love how that works out. But let's try a more simple one. This is Alien Invasion. Check out Jimmy on this cover. These games sure gave him some strange faces. Now this is a cool puzzle game where you have to stop aliens by moving their ships across a board to match them by color with at least two others. You pretty much have free reign to move them wherever. Eventually, a Twonky will appear and you'll have to match it to destroy it. Otherwise, it'll grow and take up more space. It's to the point, but kind of addicting. Look at Jimmy in the corner here. Check out his eyes. But speaking of games about Twonkies, this is Attack of the Twonkies, based on the two-part special episode. You fly around Retroville and suck them into a vacuum, but you have to be wary of your energy because it depletes and slowly refills. You also have to keep dropping them off so they don't evolve. Another feature is the ability to pick up Sheen, who causes several enemies to freeze by singing really badly. The unfortunate thing is that he sings very loudly, so it's actually a hindrance to me too because I have to stop playing for a moment to turn down the volume. It's simple and easy to get the hang of. You can kill about 10 minutes with it. Now here's The Big Freeze, developed by Singtel. We get a Star Wars-inspired intro where the game is explained to us. The aliens have captured everyone in Retroville, so you have to use your freeze ray to fight them. You shoot them as they fly around in a location from the show. Don't hit the exicles either. Those will freeze you and impair your vision. You can also fire an ice bomb to do some serious damage. Then when you clear a level, you get to answer a question. This is actually really clever. It asks you what a cookie is, and the right answer is a small piece of information stored on your computer. 
Now this is a very simple yet effective target shooter, but the real interesting part of it involves the developer. It's a company called Singtel, short for Singapore Telecommunications. It's a really big mobile network operator in Singapore. They aren't exactly known for making games, but they are a massive corporation. Apparently the largest mobile network operator in Singapore. This is not a company I ever would have expected to develop a Jimmy Neutron game, let alone two of them. That's right, they made another. It's simply labeled as J-Game. A species called the Shakaboom Aliens are invading Earth. You're flying your jetpack plane and trying to defeat them. And the controls don't work. I mean, it's a sideways shooter. What you see is what you get with this one. Darn Shakaboom Aliens messed with my controls. Though it gets even messier. Level 2 is essentially inaccessible because it requires a login that's been lost to time. See, this was made for an event in Singapore that only kids below 14 were able to participate in. The one who scored the highest in level 2 won a prize. So yeah, you kinda had to be there. I mean, the prize was a 30-hour Jetpack 256K with an 18-month contract CW modem, whatever all that is. Hope it was worth it. So here's where things get interesting. When the movie that kicked off the series was being released, many different shorts were made to promote it. Some of these played non-stop on Nickelodeon and are probably burned into the minds of anyone who grew up seeing them. But they also had Flash games based on them, so let's check them out. This is Carl Squared. Look at these guys. They look very appeased. An experiment went awry and now there's a horde of Carls to deal with. Using your special goggles, you can see which one's real, so you have to shoot the clones. Not much to it, though the game over screen is kind of funny. Now here's Cookie Time. Based on the short Nickelodeon used to play every two minutes, more or less. Check out this intro. I mean, I'd probably make that face too. You need to get your time travel remote back, but you also have to run away from this dinosaur. You collect cookies as you run, and you can either eat them to refill your depleting energy, or you can throw them at the dino and make it slow down. You have to play strategically, because you never know if a cookie's going to appear in time. It's an oddly complex system for such a seemingly typical game. One level goes on for a really long time, too. It's fun, though, and the animation is amusing. This one is called Hypercorn. Jimmy's having a dream about creamed corn, and you have to navigate a series of platforms to save your parents and Goddard. It's harder than it sounds, because it's hard to tell where you'll end up jumping when you press an arrow key. If you fall over the edge, you get to hear this. If that isn't enough, the cream corn shooting out of the platforms will really mess you up. This is really hard, and one that I can't seem to get the hang of. Then again, I'm not very good at games. So let's check out New Dog Old Tricks. You're trying to prove to Cindy that your robot dog Goddard is better than her normal dog Humphrey. I mean, Goddard can talk after all. Is it dangerous? To prove your superiority, you need to remember the order Humphrey performs his actions in, then you press the correlating buttons to repeat them. Luke, I am your father. And when you lose, you play dead by self-destructing. It's just a basic pattern memory game where you can watch silly animations. Personally, I think this dog is better than both of them. Now here's C-minus. Very sorry about that pun. We're in the ocean, trying to save our parents and preserve our breath. And also trying to escape this giant fish like the T-Rex in Cookie Time. You collect power-ups while avoiding fish and other things like sinking pianos. Hey, they gotta reach this guy somehow. I love the game over because it looks like you're swimming directly into the fish even though it came up behind you. But yeah, this one's alright. Now here's Pain Pain Go Away. Cindy got a hold of Jimmy's pain transference helmet, so she's making you really suffer with it. You should probably get it back. Oh yeah, a million dentists are also trying to stop you. I don't care what they do to me, I ain't paying that bill. Thankfully, you can kill them with frisbees, Jimmy's most deadly invention yet. You can also meet Carl, who gives you invincibility, but it's fun to just throw frisbees at him. Each level ends when you find Cindy hiding. It's a lot of fun. I'd say give this one a try. And now we have- <laughs> Oh my god. Look at Carl back here. What a face. Even Jimmy looks goofy. This is Ultra Lord vs. the Squirrels. Angry squirrels are rabid for a taste of our boy genius. It's a lot like Pac-Man, but you have more mobility. 
which does make it a little harder to go where you want to when trying to get through spaces. You control Jimmy and collect acorns while avoiding squirrels, and later you also avoid Carl, who comes in with an army of spiders. Thankfully, you do have weapons you can pick up. Once all the acorns are collected, Ultralord appears, but then you have to reach him. How cruel of them to dangle victory in front of you like that. But then this happens. So yeah, this is a very strange game. The concept is there, it's just a little goofy in execution. But let's conclude this silly portion of the video with one called Lightspeed Liftoff. Now this is one wild cover. Your goal is to launch yourself into space by running through town and collecting stuff for points. You start off practically naked and have to collect your clothes, but avoid obstacles. No worries, Jimmy, I've been there before. Then in the second stage, you can barely see because you're flying around with Carl and you take up too much of the screen. Couldn't they have made you a little smaller? I should also mention that you can collect skateboards to give yourself a boost once you get all three, but it isn't really worth it in my opinion. You're going fast enough as is, you just have to avoid the obstacles. And look at the grin Jimmy gives you whenever you win. What was with these games and constantly giving Jimmy the weirdest faces possible? Not to mention all the weirdness from the AWE games and his strange character model in Super Brawl 2. Why is it always Jimmy that gets the weird design treatment? Anyway, in the third stage, you're running and you avoid Sheen, who's waving at you. He's a real pain to avoid and can easily end your game here. But if you survive him, you can fly a jetpack around and avoid Cindy. You also have to avoid Ultra Lord figures, but I keep running into them because I keep mistaking them as collectibles. I blame Sheen. Then in the final stage, you're in your rocket and collecting fuel. It's really hard. Overall, this one isn't too bad. A little rough around the edges, but decent enough. But now let's get on with a really good one. This might be the best one in the whole video, actually. It was developed by a company called Rasterworks, who also made a beloved shooter called Phosphor Beta 2. Like that, this is also a first-person shooter. Yeah, a Jimmy Neutron first-person shooter. Now that's creative. This is Invention Revenge. Jimmy's inventions have gone out of control and he has to destroy them with his goo gun. You start in his lab and jump around, shooting everything you see and trying to take them all out. Oh, that's, um... Well, that's one heck of a thing to have in your lab, Jimmy. You get some really cool level designs as you jump across platforms and move into different corridors. There's a lot of attention to detail and every level has a very retro vibe to it. I mean, the city is called Retroville. The game is also very forgiving because it moves you to the next level even if you don't destroy all the inventions. The lair stage is cool, but the Retroville one is even better. You fight your inventions through the streets, but you can also go through the subway and reach different sides of town. Ah, do they really have to put that on a billboard for all to see? Then in the final stage, you're at school and fighting robots through the gym, the halls, and a secret passageway that takes you to this awesome arena where you can bounce around and fight from different angles. So yeah, this is incredible. Might be one of the best Nickelodeon games I've played online. It's so much fun and I highly recommend it. It's short and sweet, but you can tell they put effort into it. Great job, Rasterworks. So now let's try another big one. One that pertains to a very familiar engine on this channel. It's been a long time since we've looked at it, but let's check out the Jimmy Neutron games that were made for the 3D Groove Engine. The 3D Groove Engine was utilized by many developers in the early 2000s, mostly for creating games based on brands or children's TV shows. Some of them received mixed reviews for a variety of reasons, largely because the graphics were never that stellar. But a lot of people grew up with these and have good memories of playing them. There are a few games we can check out on this. Let's start with Space Blast. Developed by Andrade Arts and Gigawatt Studios, you're flying around in space and shooting at asteroids. What's not to like? You can also switch to first-person mode, giving you two different options for how to play. It's really awesome. I like this one a lot, though sometimes you can really overload the screen with the power-ups you collect. But yeah, this one's great. Interestingly enough, it isn't the only one of its kind. This is Gotta Blast Rocket Race by the same developers. It was heavily advertised on Nickelodeon and meant to be part of a contest with a ton of prizes. You could find codes to unlock parts for your rocket on different products, including a special Jimmy Neutron Captain Crunch cereal. So instead of Wendy's, you can play this while eating some fresh Captain Crunch. Unfortunately, only the non-promo version was ever found. 
It's believed it was meant to be a version of the game released after the contest was over, so it's missing some features. Still, this one is awesome. You get an opening cutscene of Jimmy messing around, then you get to select a captain and design for your ship. Your characters include Jimmy, Cindy, Goddard, Nick, Carl, Sheen, King Goobot, and Libby. It doesn't make a difference who you choose, but it's still cool to have so many options. Then it plays similarly to the other one, but with a more interesting ship. It's a lot of fun. You should check these out. But now let's look at the other 3D Groove game. This was made by And Up, who we've actually looked at before. Along with E-Zone, they developed the Pony Express Pringles game. I'm honestly amazed that game had two companies behind it. This is called Rescue Jet Fusion, based on the special episodes of the same name. Not to be confused with the console version. Now this is completely different from anything we've covered so far. First, we see a recap of the episode, then we choose to play as either Jimmy or Jet Fusion. Then we head into the ocean and... uh... Um, that's bad. Yeah, the controls aren't great. It might be because the 3D Groove Engine is old and didn't age well, but it does make it hard to play this today. You're on a time limit, so it's hard to beat it when the controls are against you. But once you get moving, you shoot at ninjas while avoiding their throwing stars. The first stage is on a straightforward path with a few collectibles you can collect if you search around certain corners. You use NHMY to activate power-ups when you collect them, and halfway through the stage, Beautiful Gorgeous jumps out and attacks you. You don't have to defeat her, so you can just keep moving until you meet Professor Calamitous. You can just keep shooting him to win, he isn't too hard. But if you lose, you get captured and have to start from the very beginning no matter what level you're on. So let's try Jimmy instead, and yeah, this one isn't much better. I like the level design though. The underwater feel really comes out. Almost reminds me of how absolutely terrified I am of the bottom of the ocean. Wait a minute, get me out of here. But what's weird is that after defeating Calamitous, you get captured anyway. This happens when you lose, so what difference does it make? We end up at the same place no matter what. So you escape from a cage and have to fly around the evil lair before a bomb goes off. But the glitches are even worse than they are in the ocean stage. Honestly, the glitches are so bad that I can't even complete the level. So that's about as far as we can go with this one. It's okay, but it's a shame technology has to be a pain. I guess we can play Invention Revenge to make it pay for this. But actually, we aren't finished just yet. There's one more selection of games I'd like to cover here, also based on some special episodes. So let me jog the memories of anyone who grew up in the 2000s. Remember the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour? For those who don't know, it was a three-part crossover between Jimmy Neutron and the Fairly Odd Parents. These were always so cool to watch and a thrilling concept for fans of both shows. You didn't think Nickelodeon would miss the opportunity to make Flash games based on it, did you? This is Retroville Rescue. It's unique because you can actually build your own levels, and back at the time of its release, you could play stages created by others. Professor Calamitous, who's in this despite not being in the initial episode, has kidnapped Cindy and trapped her in a bubble. You need to collect parts of the d bubble device to save her. Now you travel through different stages in Retroville, able to switch between Jimmy and Timmy as you battle magnetomazoid robots. You collect parts, push crates, kill robots, or bubble them, and work your way through Retroville. It's nice to see how creative they get with some level designs. I like this one. It can really occupy a good amount of time. This next one, Co-Pilot Chaos, is based on the second part in the trilogy. The anti-fairies are attacking and trying to make Friday the 13th every day. Wow, I'd hate to deal with this guy every day. Because of this, you have to fly around as Jimmy and Timmy while avoiding superstitious obstacles, along with the anti-fairies themselves. You can choose to fly through either Dimsdale or Retroville, changing the graphics to match the respective show. You can drop junk with Spacebar and punch with the B key. It also looks like Jimmy and Timmy have perpetually smiling faces during this. Quite the optimism in a time of great danger. Both animation styles are cool to see, and the obstacles are clever. It's really engaging, which makes it easy to accidentally play for an extended period of time. We should move on. This is Shirley's Revenge, based on the third part of the trilogy. You're in a monster truck and Shirley is chasing you around while destroying the city. You have to rescue your friends who are trapped in bubbles, but if you miss them, one of Shirley's claws will seize them. You can fight back by shooting a laser at Shirley from behind while avoiding his own attacks. You can also get power-ups. This is also a lot of fun and one you can end up accidentally playing for hours. They did good with these Jimmy Timmy games. But there's one more we should touch on before we end this video. This is Flippin' Flow, and while it isn't necessarily a Jimmy Timmy game, it uses the art style from the Jimmy Timmy Power Hours. This is really basic, but really enticing. You click these pipes to try and make them line up, then you have to pump water through them. You can't have any spill, so you have to make sure you aren't leaving anything open. 
You can also send the water through funny obstacles for bonus points. This was part of Nickelodeon's Big Green Help program, which focused on teaching kids how to take care of the environment. But there's a reason I chose to wrap things up with this one. This was the very last Jimmy Neutron game to be posted before the show's cancellation. After a very unexpected bankruptcy from DNA Productions, the show couldn't continue. Gee, thanks, Aunt Bully. This put an end to a show many of us grew up cherishing, but at least we're able to look back at it now and relive it through games like this. Some of them were pretty good. Others were kind of strange, but they were all a blast to play through. I still think the best one is Invention Revenge. Man, that game is awesome. But they're all worth giving a shot. Check them out for yourselves and see how they are. Maybe you'll win that Singtel jetpack thing. This was a nice trip to the past, and I'm glad we could revisit what many of us consider to be one of our favorite childhood shows. To me, Jimmy Neutron will always be one of the most essential Nicktoons. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to figure out what to do with all these boxes of Captain Crunch and Wendy's kids meals. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.